pretty bizarre things happen here. Most of the people I know down here have seen something bizarre at one time or another. And we don't discuss it a whole bunch, but they believe. They think there's something going on too. My partner and I moved to the San Luis Valley to raise cattle. Did not move here for UFOs, you know. And didn't even realize that this was a hot spot of the nation for sightings. And I knew nothing about them anyway. Well, then I started meeting some of the locals down here. And they all had UFO stories. I mean, one after another after another, even to the point where there was a real estate company years ago that would make people who bought land from them sign a disclaimer saying that they were aware that this, there was UFO activity in this valley. See? <laughs> so anyway, it got to the point I'd giggle and say, we need a UFO watchtower, never ever thinking I'd ever do it. Well, after four and a half years of struggling with cows because they don't eat sand real well, they about broke me. So I was talking to one of the farmers one day and I said, you know, I've had to sell the cows. I don't want to sell my land. And he said, you need to put up that UFO watchtower you giggled about. You'd have fun. It was just going to be a little old mom and pop business. We'd be open in the summer, closed in the winter, catch that tourist traffic off the highway, you know, never thinking we would ever see anything from here. I mean, that, that was not even a vision. Well, from the time we opened, we started seeing things. And as of now, and this is November, we have had 67 sightings from just here since we opened. One night we had about 60 people over here. And there was a couple sitting out front on the bench and the woman jumps up just screaming, do you see him, do you see him? They were so high up, if she hadn't pointed them out, I would have never seen them. And there was one here and one here and they were moving remarkably fast towards the north. The one in the front stopped, and it waited for the one behind to catch up, and when that one caught up, the two of them took off, and there was a streak of light across the sky. Another night, it looked like um, a shooting star, and it was over here on the other side of the sand dunes. And it's coming down, I'm watching this shooting star, okay? And it gets below the peaks of the mountains, and like it lost its momentum, and it started to float like this. Well, see, that makes sense to my weird mind. But anyway, <laughs> what didn't make sense is it went straight back up. So that, it wasn't, it wasn't a shooting star. There's so many bizarre things have happened here in the last 12 years. And, and I tell folks, maybe you don't quite get all of this, okay? But you better have an open mind because something's going on up there in that cosmos that we just don't know about. And do I believe now? You betcha. <laughs> I've seen some pretty strange things. I've seen things that I've never even heard of before. I think there's a lot of things in this universe that we don't understand and maybe we're not meant to. Elvis! Here, buddy, buddy. Oh, there he is. How you doing, big dog? Hey. That's my big boy. Yeah, that's my big boy. I was born in Texas, but I had the good sense to move to Colorado when I was six months old. And been in the, in the valley almost ever since. My name is Jay Young, and I'm the manager of Colorado Gators Reptile Park. I've known Judy for quite a while. I guess I went to the UFO Watchtower probably the first year she opened it. 
It was a novel idea. She knew there was all these sightings in the San Luis Valley, and as she's told you, I'm sure, she's seen things since then. <laughs> you know about Snippy the horse, right? The first documented animal mutilation, possible you know, UFO mutilation, happened here in the San Luis Valley back in uh, the late 60s. And uh, it was a horse named Snippy the horse. It was just totally stripped bare, but where the meat ended on the neck, uh, the flesh was carterized. There was no blood in the horse's body, and there were no signs of any predators or anything strange around it. We just found this horse with the flesh missing off of its head. And we had an ostrich disappear. It's missing to this day. It's been like four years now. And nobody ever saw this ostrich. So we decided to name him Snippy if he ever does show up. I think the San Luis Valley probably draws a lot of uh, supernatural or uh, extraterrestrial activity, possibly because of the geothermal water. And there's a lot of crazy people here who probably see things that they, that they didn't actually see too. But <laughs> and the San Luis Valley draws strange people, so it might as well draw strange aircraft as well. <laughs> Some say that it's the vastness of the valley because it's so huge and not highly populated. Others say it's the spirituality of the valley. Others say that there's an ET base in Mount Blanca over here. Well, all of this sounds really good, you know, but it didn't make sense to my mind. Then I got a magazine from Great Britain, and in that magazine it said that the majority of their sightings was where there were hot water wells. That makes sense. <laughs> From one end of this valley to the other, we have geothermal water. We have very little atmosphere here at our elevation. We have very little uh, pollution, we have very clear skies. You know, we, we do a lot of watching just from our front yard. Judy built a nice place for people to go and, and hang out uh, that didn't have a front yard here. The folks who come here to visit, I always, first thing I ask is, have you ever had any UFO experiences? Some will come right on out and say, oh yeah. But, you know, folks have made fun of them for, for relating their stories. And, and I said, how can people do that? People have these experiences. Don't make fun of them. Everyone, whether they're skeptical or not, everybody kind of wants to think uh, we're not alone. Yeah, I've seen lights in the sky, and the objects that seem to hover and uh, then take off quickly. I was up in the mountains with my friend um, near Denver, and it was the middle of the day, and we saw something that was just hovering for a long time. It was just like an orb um, that was brightening and dimming, but it was still for a really long time, and then it moved. I was just left my house, I uh, was on my way into town and had some lights coming over towards us from where Blanca is and as it was coming towards us it seemed to come down like get brighter and brighter as it was coming down. It's pretty good ways up there though and all of a sudden it went from going straight at us and took an immediate right and went off and just disappeared off into the sky. Uh, we have what we call the uh, mystery lights, you know, it's lights we see over top of the mountains. Not moving, not blinking, so it's not really an airplane or nothing. Doesn't look like quite like a star, so we don't really know what it is, so we just called it mystery lights. Um, driving up Highway 17 one night, I saw three lights off to the left, and uh, then they, they went over the mountains in uh, less than 10 seconds. I calculated out that they were there was no sonic boom from them taking off, breaking the sound barrier. So that was strange. And then, and then I calculated it out they were going in up, upwards of 21,000 miles per hour. I've actually never experienced anything, and I've never seen anything myself in the area. But I believe it. You know, in the cities and valley, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of buildings. But out here in the open, you can really see everything in the sky. So I'm sure there has been plenty of sightings out here. There's plenty of room for it. 
If extraterrestrials were mean, we wouldn't be here, kids, because they have, their technology was so much greater than ours. We wouldn't be here. There's a painting over there, and the woman who did the painting is an abductee. She has been abducted for, oh gosh, since she was just a child, and she's 50 now. And, um, and now she tries to make it a positive experience. And yeah, she was scared, but that's human nature. We're gonna be scared about the unknown. You know, I used to watch Mulder on TV and stuff, but <laughs> as far as really being into it, I was a horse person. I was not somebody that was out here and staring at the sky all the time. Now I kind of wish I would have taken the time to stare at the sky because there's some amazing stuff that goes on up there. You know, you look at all the, the turmoil that we go through here on Earth and the changes and there has to be something better. <laughs>